Our survival depends on many interconnected factors, making univariable models insufficient. In this video, we'll delve into a more realistic approach, multivariable logistic regression, for understanding survival or any binary outcome. Expect to learn how to visualize predicted survival probabilities, validate your model by checking all assumptions in one line of code, extract and interpret all possible odds ratios from your model, identify the most important factors influencing survival, create and interpret raw curves, and much more. Let's dive straight into the Titanic survival dataset from the CAR data package and uncover what really influenced survival on the Titanic. We are going to break down how gender, age and passenger class shaped a person's chances of making it through the tragic disaster. To run logistic regression, we use the GLM function, which stands for Generalized Linear Model. We are pairing it with a binomial family, and this is key, because it's designed to handle binary outcomes, like 0 versus 1 or yes versus no. The goal? Calculate survival probability of any predictor. Next, we need the formula. The formula has two parts. On the left side of the tilde, we place our binary outcome, also known as the response variable, dependent variable, target, and more. On the right side of the tilde, we place our predictors, which can also be called independent variables, explanatory variables, regressors, covariates, features in machine learning, or even risk factors in medicine. The last thing we need is data, and that's it. Now we are going to use two categorical and one numeric predictor to show you exactly how to interpret complex models. Categorical variables are straightforward to interpret. Each category gives a clear survival probability. But when it comes to numeric variables, like age, things get trickier. Why? Because they can have nonlinear relationships with the outcome meaning their impact isn't always a straight line. So how do we handle that? We need to check for nonlinearity, and one of the fastest ways to do this is with a generalized additive model. And this method not only fits the data better, but also exposes nonlinear trends in your numeric predictors. All right, this looks pretty linear, so we are good to go. But if you ever spot a nonlinear relationship in your data, I've got you covered. Check out my last video where I break down exactly how to tackle that. Now, here is where most people drop the ball. The next step is crucial and often ignored. We've got to check the model's assumptions to make sure it's solid. Skip this and you're risking misleading conclusions that could throw everything off. And the check model function from the performance package is a total game changer. Once you see what the thing can do, you'll never want to use anything else. And here is why. It automatically recognizes the model type you are working with and visually checks all model assumptions specific to that model type at the same time. You don't even need to know which assumptions to look for. Check model has your back. And the best part? Once you use it, you'll never forget the key assumptions for your model, making the learning process almost instant. Now, the last assumption is something only you can check, dependence of observations. This matters if you've got repeated measures in your data. Check model can't see that, but if you are already working with mixed effects logistic regression, it can easily handle those assumptions too. Want a video on mixed effect models? Drop it in the comments. Here is what the check model function reveals. The posterior predictive check compares the model's predicted intervals with the actual observed values, helping us assess how well the model fits the data. Most residuals fall within the error bands, with only a few potential outliers shown in red. But the next plot shows that these outliers are not influential as the points remained inside the contour lines. All three predictors are not multicollinear, as the variation inflation factor stays below 5. Finally, the residuals exhibit a uniform distribution. 
And since our model's assumptions are satisfied, we can now visualize the model results. And by results, I mean model predictions. We'll begin by using the ggEffect function from the ggEffects package to obtain the predicted probabilities. For numeric variables, ggEffect provides multiple values to illustrate trends, rather than just the average. It's also important to note that these averages are calculated across all categories of other predictors. Now listen to me very carefully. Averaging across all categories is crucial because many predictive functions default to the first reference levels for categorical predictors. For example, the predict response function adjusts predictions based on females in the first passenger class, as these are the reference levels in our categorical predictors. This results in an estimated survival probability of 68% for an 80-year-old woman with a first-class ticket, which is accurate for that specific group. However, this can be misleading for our entire dataset, which includes three different passenger classes and two genders. When we average over all these categories, the expected survival rate for an 80-year-old drops to just 10%, much lower than 68%. So be mindful of what you are asking the model to predict, otherwise you might draw inaccurate conclusions. By adding the plot command to the ggEffect function, we can visualize the estimated survival probabilities for each predictor separately. Additionally, using the plot grid function from the sgplot package, we can combine these plots into a single multiplot. This allows us to create and save a fancy plot in our desired format, quality and size, effectively telling a compelling story about our dataset. The plot shows some interesting trends. Females have a much higher survival rate than males, survival probability decreases with age, and passengers in higher classes have better survival rates. However, while the prediction plot is impressive, it doesn't provide the odds ratios with their 95% confidence intervals and p-values. These are essential to confirm if the differences in survival rates are statistically significant. Typically, such details are often included in logistic regression studies in the form of some fancy table. To create such a fancy table, we'll use the table regression function from GT Summary package, where we only need three main arguments. The model name, the exponentiate equals true argument, which converts log odds ratios into more intuitive odds ratios, and the add pairwise contrasts equals true argument, which allows us to compare all categories with each other rather than just against a reference category as the summary function does. The rest of the options, totally optional, but I'll dive into contrast adjust and pairwise reverse when we interpret the model results soon, because they are game changers. For now, you can save your Polish table in a publication-ready Microsoft Word or PNG format. This move will save you a ton of time and effort when writing your paper. Plus, you can tweak your table in Microsoft Word without touching your data or our code. This makes you both efficient and fast. Speaking of time saving, ever tried writing equations for a multivariable model in Microsoft Word? It's a nightmare, right? Before we dive into interpreting model results, let me save you some headaches. The extract equation function from the Equatiomatic package converts your model to latex format making it a breeze to include equations in your documents. Plus, the betas in the formula match the odds ratios in our table, which we'll break down next. All right, let's interpret the results. Now, you could use the basic summary function, but honestly, there is a much better way, which we'll cover next. However, since the summary function is so commonly used, let's quickly cover it so you're prepared. When model estimate is negative, survival probability decreases with age. But if model estimate is positive, survival probability would increase with age. Here, the estimate is minus 003, meaning all the passengers were more likely to die in the Titanic disaster. 
Makes sense, right? But here's the problem. The summary function gives us less intuitive log odds ratios. The table regression function delivers the more intuitive odds ratios. There is a slight difference in how we interpret numeric or categorical predictors. For instance, with the numeric predictor age, we interpret its odds ratio as the average change in odds of survival for a one unit change in age, while holding other predictors fixed. Particularly, the odds of survival decrease by the factor of 0.97, or by 3%, with every one year of age increase. Let's talk about interpreting categories. The word ratio simply means one thing divided by another. So, an odds ratio is the odds of survival for one category divided by the odds of survival for another. To make it even clearer, think of transitioning from one category to another as one unit change, similar to numeric predictors. For example, the odds of females surviving the Titanic are 12.2 times or 1,120% higher than males, while keeping all other factors constant. And this difference is highly significant, showing a real association between survival and gender. Similarly, first-class passengers have 3.6 times or 260% higher odds of survival compared to second-class passengers. And first-class passengers have 9.87 times or 887% higher odds of survival compared to third-class passengers. And get this, while the summary function only compares the second and third classes to the reference first class, the table regression function goes a step further. It also compares the second class to the third class. So, you get way more insights from your model. Now, please pause the video and interpret the last odds ratio yourself. Alright, why contrasts adjust and pairwise reverse are total game changers. First, the Bonferroni correction of p-values for multiple comparisons increases our p-values, making it tougher to hit that magic 005 significance mark. This is crucial because it prevents us from discovering nonsense, also known as type 1 error. However, Bonferroni is famous, but it's not always your best friend. It's super conservative. So swap it out for something like Tukey or Holm, or even go with non-correction if you are dealing with small datasets and don't want to miss any real discoveries, aka type 2 errors. Now, pairwise reverse equals false is your go-to if you prefer interpreting odds ratios greater than 1 instead of less than 1. For more details, check out my dedicated video on the GT summary package. Trust me, the table regression function is a goldmine because there are settings for everything you might need. And hey, if you found this video useful, smash that like button or join the channel. It really helps keep this content coming. I know this video is getting a bit long, but please bear with me, because the next few points are very important. We'll literally talk about variable importance to figure out the best predictors of survival. Why do we need this? Well, with big sample sizes, all p-values might be significant, like in our example, making it tough to see which predictors are actually contributing the most. To rank the importance of these predictors, we can use two simple methods. First up, the traditional route. We use the ANOVA function from the CAR package. This gives us the likelihood ratio chi-square, which not only ranks your predictors, high chi-square means more importance, but also can be reported as an effect size. In our case, sex is the top contributor to survival, no pun intended, while age is the least important predictor for survival on the Titanic. Now let's level up. We can run a random forest classification algorithm. And guess what? We're using the VIP package to get a slick, intuitive variable importance graph. Same results, but way cooler presentation. Alright, here is a big question. How well does our model fit the data? Your clients are definitely going to ask this. While linear regression uses R squared for goodness of fit, logistic regression can be a bit trickier. But no worries, I've got you covered. 
we can get all performance metrics for any model with a super intuitive performance function from the performance package. This is the same package that lets us check all assumptions in one go. The performance function gives us the IKX information criteria, Bayesian information criteria, pseudo R squared, and more. And remember the R squared value? It ranges from 0 to 1. The rule is simple the higher, the better. Now, what does R squared value of 0 0.376 mean? Is that good or bad? Great question. We can use the effect size package to interpret any R squared value. In our case, an R squared value of 0 0.376 means our three predictors explain almost 38% of the survival variance, and that's substantial. And while I love the performance package, it's missing one essential thing, the rock curve. So let's dive into the rock curve next. The receiving operating characteristic is a visual tool which shows how well your model can distinguish between positive and negative cases. The key metric is the area under the curve, AUC, which ranges from 0.5 to 1 with a simple rule. The higher the AUC, the better the model. When AUC is below 0.5, your model is performing worse than random guessing. Time to rethink. When AUC is between 0.5 and 0.8, your model has got some predictive power, but it could be better. Finally, when AUC is higher than 0.8, you are in business. Your model is doing a great job at classifying things. To create a rock curve, we'll use the PROC package and its rock function. Just feed it the actual outcomes and your predictions and let the magic happen. Our model crushed it. With an AUC of 0.84, it's way better than just guessing. This means it's a reliable tool for making predictions. But don't stop there. Look at the confusion matrix for more insights. Metrics like specificity, sensitivity or accuracy can give you a complete picture of your model's performance. Here is just a quick code, but if you want me to break down these metrics for you in a separate video, let me know in the comments below. And the final question is, do the results of multivariable models differ from univariable models? Absolutely. When you look at things one by one, univariable models, you might miss the big picture. That's where spurious correlations come in. For example, age might not seem important on its own, but when we consider gender and class, you get a whole new story, which is also usually more realistic. Alright, now that you've got a solid grip on one regression, it's time to level up your data science game. You need to learn how to produce hundreds of these models at lightning speed. And if you want to master that in the next 7 minutes, just watch that video next.